Well, thank you. Thank you for the kind invitation. So this is the topics of my talk and uh, let's start. So the structure of my talk is the following. After a short introduction, I will speak about induced kinetic differential equations. This is a knowledge uh, which almost uh, or all, but uh, someone may not be so, uh, somebody may not know, know so well. Then I will speak about the history, uh, about chaos in experiments and also in models. And then I will uh, propose uh, something which perhaps in some sense, sense is better than the approaches proposed up to now. So first of all, uh, even today, uh, a usual chemist uh, has a view that if you put everything into a glass or a test tube or whatever, then uh, uh, after a certain amount of time, we shall have a, a stationary state and it, it will be asymptotically stable. So uh, they have the view in mathematical terms that there exists a single globally asymptotically stable, stable uh, stationary state. It may depend on the uh, initial conditions. So in the long, long run, nothing happens. But uh, it turned out both in uh, chemistry and also in the theory that uh, other kind of uh, behavior is also possible. So uh, in the last 50 years, uh, people working in the field of uh, for former chemical reactions or chemical reaction, reactor, uh, reaction network theory uh, provided a lot of necessary and sufficient conditions for regular behavior. That is regular behavior, what the ordinary chemist uh, thinks uh, the uh, systems behave. And also for exotic behavior, I would uh, use this name for uh, multiple stationary states uh, within a given uh, single stoichiometric compatibility class or the presence of periodic solutions. Uh, I do not want to formally define this, uh, define this stoichiometric compatibility class. Uh, I only mentioned that it means that uh, with the same initial condition, you can have this stationary state or another stationary state. Okay, so we have a lot of conditions which are either necessary or sufficient. Surely chaos is also very far from regular uh, behavior. And uh, uh, in the last decades, there uh, appeared a, a lot of measurements and also a few models which try to reflect this behavior in uh, chemical kinetics. Uh, but uh, the general impression is that uh, the authors use, use uh, only uh, approximations or heuristics, and we should like to show how to construct a, a reaction that can rigorously be proved to show chaotic behavior. And uh, uh, in the long run, uh, our goal is or might be to have structural characteristics to predict or exclude, exclude chaotic behavior. I'm sure it is not, a, not an easy thing, but uh, this is the, the uh, goal. Now, this is a part which uh, some of you know very well, some of you may not. First of all, I would like to emphasize that we only speak about homogeneous kinetics. This means that we assume that uh, the vessel, the glass or test tube is well mixed. So we are only interested in the uh, time dependence of the chemical uh, species, concentration of the chemical species. And we assume that we have uh, a lot of reaction steps. Exactly R is the number of reaction steps. Here, X1, X2, X, M, R, the species and the coefficients before the uh, uh, sign of the species are uh, stoichiometric coefficients. These are put into two matrices, alpha and beta, and the difference of beta and alpha is uh, the stoichiometric matrix. Let's see an example. This example uh, may be called an enlarged uh, lotka volterra system, and this was introduced by Will Lavorsky as Rössler. It is obvious why I call it uh, enlarged lotka volterra because the first three steps uh, are exactly those which we find in the reversible Lotka-Volterra system, and two more reactions are added. Uh, 
And if you uh, calculate the number of species, that is the easiest, it is three. And if you calculate the number of reaction steps, it is 10, all the steps are reversible. Therefore, five times two is the number of reaction steps. And we can also calculate a quantity which uh, turned out to be very useful in some investigations, not here, but uh, still it is worth uh, mentioning. So we calculate the number that, how do we calculate this? First, we draw a graph uh, from the given uh, elementary reaction steps in such a way that we only write on once all of the, uh, these uh, linear uh, combinations of species, these are called complexes. Mm -hmm. So we only write down once, and then we draw the, the arrows uh, representing the reaction steps. And what we get is a disconnected graph in this case, a graph connected uh, of four components. So this four is just a number of these connected components. And finally, C is the rank of gamma of the stoichiometric matrix. To use chemical terms, C is a number of independent reaction steps in this system. So if you uh, subtract uh, four and three from uh, the number of complexes, then you receive two. And this is the deficiency of the system. We are very happy if this is zero and one, and we are uh, not so happy if it is more than one. Okay, so that is the uh, complex chemical reaction. Uh, we are interested in the time evolution of uh, concentrations, and uh, we uh, have uh, an equation like this, where uh, gamma is uh, the stoichiometric matrix, and we can, uh, assign some kinds of rates to all the uh, reaction steps. Uh, and we also have an initial condition. Uh, in uh, uh, most cases, uh, we use mass section, mass section type kinetics, which means that uh, the equation has a very special form. Uh, if you do not use these uh, vector notations, maybe it is simpler for you to understand this equation. If you use, uh, uh, coordinate ways notations. And here you can see what is the role of gamma, the stoichiometric numbers, and uh, here you have uh, monomials of the concentrations, and you have uh, positive numbers which are called uh, reaction rate coefficients, and these are characteristic of the uh, individual reaction steps. Okay, so this is an equation uh, which can be called a polynomial equation because the right hand side is a polynomial. And it is a natural question if, uh, is it true that all polynomial equations can be considered to be an uh, induced kinetic differential equation or not? So it is uh, relatively easy to give a characterization uh, of kinetic differential equations within the class of polynomial equations. And this is as follows. Suppose the right hand side is given by the polynomial as PM. Uh, this equation can be represented by, it can be realized by reactions if and only if PM is uh, of this form where, where FM and GM are polynomials with non negative coefficients. Uh, this uh, condition expresses the fact uh, that uh, no species can decrease in a process in which it doesn't take part. Why? Because PMC is just the rate of CM. So uh, if we have this form, then, uh, then surely the negative term should contain uh, CM as a factor. Now let's uh, turn to uh, chaos and chemistry. Well, certainly we should start with the name of Poincaré, but uh, uh, the present theory we might say started from the uh, work of Lorenz, who had who uh, published a severable nonlinear equation and found that uh, the uh, solutions uh, hardly uh, highly depend on the initial concentrations. And uh, it turned out that these uh, equations, what he proposed, had very special properties. We can construct a Poincaré map and it, it is unimodal and other things perhaps. Uh, all of you know the characteristics of, uh, of chaos. So uh, it is, uh, it, uh, it may be interesting to know that even in 1991, it was possible to construct 
a bibliography containing 7,000 items. Maybe now we have 70,000, I don't know. Uh, and I would like to mention something which is uh, not always uh, emphasized. Uh, at the beginning of our study of differential equations, we learned piano inequality. Piano inequality uh, expresses uh, the error. Uh, if you have a differential equation, it, it uh, shows uh, how much the error can be if we uh, measure the initial uh, values uh, in an inexact way. And uh, also the error coming from the fact that our model is uh, not correct. So uh, it contains two terms and this expresses uh, the error. And this error can be made as small as possible on any finite interval. The interesting thing starts when we have an infinite interval. So this inequality is fulfilled by uh, Lorentz equation and by any equation we meet. But on the long run, the difference may be very large because uh, in this inequality, we have exponential uh, estimates which can grow very, very uh, fast. So, in connection with the possibility of chaos, uh, Schauwater and uh, his co workers uh, were perhaps the first to raise the question is it possible to find chaos in chemical reactions at all? And uh, what, what uh, we should do, but it is not so easy, we, sh we should uh, study chemical reactions and prove that the concentration versus time curves are aperiodic, the trajectories are bonded, and there are no sharp peaks in the Fourier transform, and so on. And uh, if we can do this, then we can prove that a certain model which represents real chemical reaction is chaotic, but it is it is a hardest way, and I, uh, I would like to propose a way which is cheapest but uh, doesn't lead to the end. Okay. Uh, in uh, 18, uh, in 1980, Wilamowski and Ressler started with a reaction, which may be called an enlargement of the reversible uh, uh, lotka volterra. It you can see it here. And uh, this is mass conserving. So there is no uh, mass destruction like in, in steps X goes to zero. It is unconditional detailed balance, which means that no matter what the value of the reaction rate coefficients are, this reaction is detailed balanced. And also, uh, if you calculate def the definition for this reaction, it will be zero. It, it means that uh, the behavior of this uh, reaction is uh, very, very boring. Nothing in that happens. So uh, what uh, they did is that they started from this uh, chemical really good uh, example, and they destroyed it in such a way that it took away the external species, that is species AI, which may be considered to be of constant concentration, and then they arrived at the enlarged Lotka Voltara system I, I showed you before, which is not mass conserving. It, is, uh, it has a positive deficiency and, and it is only detailed balance if uh, some equalities, uh, some kind of uh, vec shape equalities are fulfilled by the reaction rate coefficients. So uh, although they started from a, a very good model, but to show approximately numerically uh, a kind of behavior which might be called chaotic, they used another model which is not as good from the chemical point of view. Hazen and Russell uh, used the extended alternator and some of the steps are not of the mass section type. Some of the steps, steps are irreversible. Uh, it is not uh, mass conserving. You see there is uh, inflow and outflow. And uh, this uh, model may be called an extended alternator. So this box part is the alternator. It is extended because we have some more steps. And again, they made some calculations and have uh, shown uh, nice figures. Peng et al. in 1990 uh, used the extended autocatalator. Uh, I would emphasize that here, the, the interesting step is this uh, simulacral step, uh, which is a 
an autocatalytic step. And this occurs a lot of times in uh, models. For example, the bracelator also contains such a step. But at the same time, this is the step which is disliked by chemists. They don't like uh, reaction steps which are of the uh, order C. They, they prefer order zero, one or two, not higher. Okay, so much about the models. And now let's speak about experiments. I, I mentioned, uh, probably I mentioned, I'm not quite sure, the experiment by Ozen and uh, Dagen who made uh, calculations on the peroxidase system and have found that the Poincaré map constructed from the experimental data is reminiscent of the function found in one dimensional time discrete systems. So uh, this is not exactly what they did, but uh, surely this was the first paper about experiment connected with chaotic behavior. So I uh, appreciate much more the next two examples where they were created later, Georgi and his co-workers started from a, a detailed, uh, realistic model of the bellows jabotinsky reaction, which is uh, a, a typical example of, uh, of a reaction with exotic behavior. So they started a model containing 80 reaction steps, and then they reduced this, arrived at a small one, and then they could uh, produce uh, curves uh, which are qualitatively very different for the uh, measurements and also, uh, also characteristic for chaos. So it's quite nice. And uh, I would also mention Rabai, who uh, constructed a model which is half abstract. So it is a model for the class of pH oscillators. So uh, uh, A may be uh, different from one to the other, uh, but uh, it, it cons consists of a um, set of reversible steps. Uh, there is uh, outflow also and uh, numerical calculations so that this uh, model also shows uh, uh, properties which we require from a, a chaotic model. Okay. Now, uh, I, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to turn to, uh, to the rigorous approach first. I would like to mention something which uh, at the moment I think is so important, but uh, it uh, seemed to be interesting at that time. First of all, we took the Lorentz equation and we wondered if it is possible to transform the Lorentz equation into a kinetic one. So we should, we would like to, we wanted to uh, transform out the, the uh, negative cross effects, which cannot occur in a cannot occur in a kinetic differential equation. And it turns out that if you take a transformation of the form m times a, where m is orthogonal and a is uh, positively traffic diagonal. Then uh, what we uh, obtain cannot be a kinetic uh, differential equation. So uh, uh, the proof of this uh, statement is uh, simply cumbersome some calculations, direct calculations. Another approach might be, which we could not apply to the Lorentz equation, but could apply to some other equations, is that we use the theory of uh, um, of uh, algebraic invariant of polynomial differential equations, mainly developed by Sibirsky in Moldavia. Uh, we start from the uh, uh, statement that if you have, uh, for, say, let's say we have a, a, a two-dimensional linear system, then the determinant and the trace of the coefficient of the right-hand side determine the quality of the stationary point. And if we uh, apply a transformation which uh, doesn't change the determinant and the trace, then the quality of the stationary state will not move. And uh, 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 some transformations, invertible linear transformations, keep these two quantities. Therefore, these are invariant, and probably it, they may have something uh, in, uh, relevant on the behavior of the solutions. Okay, now the next statement where we could apply this 
uh, relates uh, the equation by Rösler. Here we have two terms which are non-kinetic. And uh, for this, we have that no invertible linear transformation transforms these into a kinetic equation. And uh, it, it comes that it, we can have a, a invariant and it should be positive for kinetic differential equations. And it is uh, negative for uh, the rest of the equation. So uh, the transformation is impossible. Okay, now uh, the obvious plan is the following, and uh, this has been followed by some persons earlier. First, uh, you have, uh, so you are given a, a, a differential equation uh, with chaotic behavior. You have to show boundedness, and when you uh, have uh, concrete values uh, for the bonds, then you can shift the whole the solutions or the trajectories into the first order. And so then uh, all the uh, coordinates will be non-negative. Then uh, the shifted equation should be uh, transformed into another one, which has no negative cross effect and still has uh, the same trajectories. And then uh, these uh, equations should be realized by uh, chemical reactions. This is what uh, Poland did. He started for the uh, Lorentz equation. And uh, uh, why do we say that it is not, not the end of the story? Because uh, what he did that he guessed visually the necessary shift and the realization he used is approximate. And now we should like to present some kind of new results. Uh, so, so let's start from the Lorentz equation. And uh, now we are not interested in the details of chaos, we accept uh, that it is chaotic and shows everything what needed. Uh, you can either find books on the Lorentz equation or uh, these days any uh, books on differential equations which are thick enough contains large chapters about the Lorentz equation. So uh, this is uh, one of the coordinate functions and this, this is the uh, behavior of the trajectories and Okay, so I don't see the caption, never, never mind. You see this is the coordinate, uh, one of the coordinate functions, these are the trajectories, okay? Now, what you do is that uh, we use the fact that the trajectories can be uh, um, restricted uh, to the, uh, to an, by an ellipse ellipsoid, and then we add 20, 30, and zero to the coordinates, then we get a new equation. Then we apply an idea by, uh, proposed by uh, Samarzia and uh, George Cashman. Uh, we multiply the, uh, all the equations by x, y, z, which are in the first order positive. Therefore, uh, this multiplication doesn't change the trajectories. They do change the uh, coordinate functions, but they do not change the trajectories. And then we arrive at this equation. And now we receive this ugly result, which is uh, the canonic realization of the previous equation. You can check if you write down the differential induced kinetic differential equation of this uh, reaction, then you will receive the previous one. And uh, why do I say that it is an ugly uh, realization? Because uh, as I mentioned earlier, even three molecular steps are not welcome. And here we have five molecular steps and uh, it seems to be very hard to eliminate this problem because if you have three equations which are nonlinear, that you have at least one term which is uh, which of the which is of the second degree, and if you multiply this by uh, a monomial of uh, third degree, then always you arrive at uh, five degree terms, which we do not like so much. So uh, now. Uh, what I show now, it is illustration. So this is what uh, was used as proof earlier, but I only say this is an illustration. If you uh, calculate one of the components and, the, and also the um, trajectories, then you will receive a, a figure which is very similar to the original one, okay? And now surely there are some problems. So the first thing is that uh, it is not so easy to, uh, 
prove if you start from a, a chaotic differential equation that the solutions are bounded. And as I mentioned uh, in detail, uh, we don't like five order reactions, something should be done. Well, once we have a realization, maybe, maybe it is a better realization what I could uh, provide now. Uh, initialization to choose, we have some methods, mainly by uh, Matthew Johnston, Gabor Seder, Kenny and their co-workers. Uh, they can um, provide us uh, nice realizations of any kinetic differential equation. So returning to this elimination, uh, perhaps it would be uh, better to find some other method to get rid of the negative uh, cross effect. I don't know how. And uh, so this is, if you start from a, a, a chaotic equation, but an alternative is that you uh, apply a direct proof uh, of chaotic behavior of a, a model of chemical kinetics. Finally, I would like to mention uh, the transcendent numbers, which seems to be very far from this, uh, from the topics of his talks. Uh, you may know that in the 19th century, uh, one of the greatest results in mathematics was that uh, Hermit was able to prove that E is transcendent and uh, Lindemann was able to prove that pi is uh, transcendent Transcendent means a number is transcendent if it is not the solution of an algebraic equation with integer uh, coefficients. But later, as a result of the work by Cantor, it turned out that practically all the uh, real numbers are transcendent. So uh, you have uh, so. Uh, the probability of, pick, of picking a number which is not transcendent is zero. And maybe the situation here uh, is similar that uh, some people say that uh, chaotic behavior is typical within uh, the class of nonlinear systems, but we usually uh, cannot find them. So it's similar to the case of transcendent. Okay, and uh, here is the founder and some colleagues. And finally, I have some uh, references uh, I mentioned here uh, from Röster and from other persons. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>